Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments, and ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey, racing fans, welcome back to a Kentucky Derby edition of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap. We're less than two weeks away. Horses have arrived on site. They've worked over the track. Optimism is in the air from the media and from all connections. Try to keep that optimism that you're hearing over and over again about different horses to the side and do your work and do it diligently. Of course, there are things to be learned with the workouts, but it does seem to be a lot of positivity this time, and it's really hard to decipher it, and it'll make you change your opinion way too many times. One thing that is not clear ever and is hard to predict, almost as hard to predict as the winner, is the pace scenario for the Kentucky Derby. On paper, there does not appear to be that much pace in this race, and it might make things hard on some late runners. However, just remember, if one horse runs off and gets a little anxious, like Danzig Candy, perhaps, who we did so in the San Anita Derby, and like Old Trieste in the past and Palace Malice just a few years ago, that will change the race shape immensely. While out work, Nyquist, the champion, and of course Danzig Candy will hope that the pace is not too brisk early. I think if it is, there are a few horses that have an excellent chance to not only hit the board, but to maybe hit the wire first. The one that I'm really looking at and really liking the way he's coming into the race is Brody's Cause. The son of Giants Causeway, trained by Dale Romans, enters the race third off the layoff, which has been an absolutely powerful angle over the past several years. In addition, Romans has been very hot, and this horse has done well in Kentucky and over the surface already. I really like the way he finished in that bluegrass, and I think he has a big shot. He will have to break the 25-year drought since the last time the bluegrass winner has won the Kentucky Derby. That was strike the goal trained by Nick Zito, who made a similar move to what Brody's cause will have to make. There are definitely reasons why the Bluegrass winner has not won recently, and a lot of that has to do with the synthetic surface that used to be in place at Keeneland. Now that we're back to a main track, it's only a matter of time until Keeneland's major prep winner wins the race, and maybe it'll be this year with Brody's cause. I give him a big shot, especially if the pace is hot in this year's Derby. Another horse that I'm very fond of the way he's coming into the race and the way he's finished the last few races is Creator. This son of Tappet really has a strong turn of foot, and trainer Steve Asmussen is more than due to get his derby win. I really like the way this horse is fit, finished in the Arkansas Derby, as many do, as he's one of the now horses, but he finished well in the race before it in the Rebel Stakes, too. If he can continue to move forward at all, he'll be in with a big shot when they hit the gates Saturday at late Saturday afternoon at Churchill Downs, next Saturday, that is, for the big event. There are a few other horses that could certainly run on late and, and be a factor. We talked about Mo Tom last week. This horse has a very strong turn of foot as well. His connections are super positive, and they're hoping for a better ride out of Corey Lannery this time around. I still wonder if this horse is fast enough and whether he doesn't create some of his own trouble, which would be a real problem if that's the case in a 20-horse field like the Derby. Sudden breaking news is another horse that at a price could get into the money for me, but I don't know if I can see him winning it. He really has to time his, his burst perfectly. He'll need an absolute perfect trip to get things done on next Saturday at Churchill Downs. However, he definitely fits in this race and is a good use underneath in the exotics. So, the pace scenario remains to be seen, but... If they're rolling early, they could be rolling from the back late, and that's when a lot of times there's plenty of value to be had. I've got a feeling this year, if, whether Nyquist wins or not, there's going to be value to found, be found somewhere in the exotics. All right, well, we have two episodes coming to you next week after the draw, when we'll know a little more about how to kind of break down the race based on where the, you know certain horses are drawn. If certain horses are drawn to the inside or the outside, we're going to know that they're going to have to leave, and that may spice up the pace a little bit. There is a chance this race, like last year, could have a slow pace, and if that's the case, it'll certainly favor the probable favorite Nyquist amongst others. Anyway, enjoy your week before next weekend. Get ready for the Derby. Get ready for a big week. we got Belmont Park starting on Friday. We've got the Kentucky Oaks next Friday. We've got a huge day Saturday. It's a great time to be a horse fan. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you next week, and good luck this week. <laughs>